Why are you so tense, god damn it? Because I don't know what I'm doing! Calm down. Hello everybody, it's Philly Cuts. I'm out in nature. It's a little dark, it's getting a little dark. But I'm here to talk about some HD collections. And I got picked up a few. Overall, I want to say that I think the HD collections are a good thing for people. For someone like me, HD collections are great because I never had a PS2. Um, I was a GameCube guy during that segment of time. So I never got to play a lot of great franchises that were on, you know, the PS2. Such as Metal Gear Solid, Sly Cooper... Jackson Dexter. So I did pick this up for 20 bucks. It has three games in one. Unbelievable value. It has 3D support and it even has move support. I played it in 3D. It's a lot of fun. Great deal. And my brother Choi picked me up the Silent Hill collection. Now, this is where people run into a lot of problems with HD collections. And this definitely had big problems. Um, people who were faithful to this series really, really were ticked off by this collection. It was actually so buggy and so bad at one point that Amazon.com actually stopped selling it. It also got so bad that the art director, Masahiro Ito, said that the remake was poor. Now, this was probably primarily because the way when they changed the graphics and updated the graphics, they took out, I guess, all the fog effects. So that really, you know, changed the composition of the game. Now, I don't know. I heard originally that the fog effects were in there for atmospheric purposes, you know, in the PS2 games. But they were also in there for, you know, to cover up any graphical deficiencies that may have existed at the time. This is where, you know, I can see how HD collections may be a bad thing. If they're just going to rush to make a port, you know, make these updates, and it comes out in such a way where people are very, very outraged, that it's too clicky, it's too buggy, then I can see people's points. Um, it's funny because Konami actually put out the Metal Gear Solid um, HD collection, which had three games on it, and people were very, very pleased with that. So I'm wondering if it was really that bad? Was it really that clunky? Was it or was it just, you know, hardcore nostalgia from fans of Silent Hill? Now, I know people got really upset that, you know, the voice acting was changed. A lot of people were upset that they used different voice actors in these HD updates. I know that a lot of people were upset, too, that some of the wording in the text was changed. You know, not it didn't exactly transcribe what was spoken on the screen and it had different words. I don't know. I felt like people were getting real nitpicky about it. I don't know yet. I haven't played it. Actually, I haven't even opened this up yet. Now, I guess I can understand how some people would get upset seeing, you know, complaining and saying, oh, you know, it's just the game companies. They want to, you know, they want to just cash in, make money and whatnot. Well, no kidding. That's what game companies are there for. They're there to make money. Now, if you want to really trace it back and figure out when these HD collections really started to come into fashion in this generation, it had to start, I think, in about 2009 when they did away with backwards compatibility on the PS3 consoles and they came out with the HD remakes of God of War 1 and 2. And that was to, that was actually released, I believe, Three or four months, I think, before God of War 3 actually came out. And I thought it was a valuable service. I'm glad they did it. Uh, for someone like me who didn't play the God of War series ever in the last generation, I thought it was great. And I played through those games and they were wonderful. And it caught me up to speed on what was going on in God of War 3. Wow. Well, since that time, the number of... HD collections that have come out have rose quite a bit. I don't see a problem with it. If it's really that bad and people are that upset about it, just don't buy it. Don't buy the HD collections. It's that simple. I don't see why anyone would really get upset about it. I don't think it really takes away that much from developers' manpower 
to do these, you know, which are essentially a lot of times ports. They don't even update the textures all that much. And maybe that therein lies the people's complaint. You know, technically it goes back even further, ports and remakes and whatnot. Pac-Man could once only be played in the arcades. But, you know, obviously you could play it on Atari, you could play it on Activision. Probably one of the biggest ports or remakes that I thought was significant was in GameCube when they redid Resident Evil, the first one. And it upset quite a bit of people because Resident Evil first came out on PlayStation and then they decided to, on the next generation, remake it for GameCube. And a lot of people were very upset about that, that you could only get it on GameCube. So, you know, Sony's been making these ports and remakes big time and it looks like they've been making enough money where in 2011 i believe that halo 1 was released by xbox 360 on um, the first halo and it turned out to be a really cool game i really liked it i liked i again i didn't have an xbox in that generation and it allowed me to play that game in high def they also had a great feature where you could play the game as it was on the xbox so you could switch back and forth between the graphics. I thought that was great. Also, interestingly, the Silent Hill HD remake, the collection, received a wide gamut of scores from reviewers from professional game sites. For instance, an IGN reviewer gave the game a 9, whereas on Destructoid, the reviewer there gave it a 3 out of 10, I believe. 3 out of 10, if I was correct. Wow. Big, big discrepancies there. Makes you wonder what responsibility as a reviewer do you have to the nostalgia of the game, to what the game originally was like, balancing that with the possibility that the game brings to new players such as myself who haven't played these games before. Where's the happy medium and what is the purpose of an HD collection? It's hard. I think it's a hard task to review, especially if you are a reviewer and you played the game in its original form. Nostalgia, I think, really messes with people's heads a lot. Um, things aren't always as you remember them. And I've gone back and played games that I have fond memories of as a kid. And uh, it just isn't as cool as it is up here in my brain. You know, like old NES classics and things of that nature. Sometimes I think things are maybe best left in memory. I think that we are in the best age of gaming right now. Um, graphically, stories, innovation, 3D. I mean, I love it. I love the direction that gaming is in right now. And I wouldn't trade it for the world. And I look forward to more and more progression. More and more graphical tweaks and everything. I think it's the best time to be a gamer right now. There's so much choice. There's so much variety, and HD collections add to that choice and variety. You get new achievements, you get trophies, it allows you to catch up on last generation classics that you may not have caught before. Granted, they may play dated because yeah, these are games from 10 years ago, a lot of times. So obviously, you know, level design and things of that nature, story elements may be stale and old, but hey, you don't have to buy it. All right, it's getting dark. I gotta go. Peace.